a simple, elegant, non-underwire, non-stretch bra pattern that uses age and body diverse models in their marketing, cue the fireworks. Hello there and welcome back to the June Made channel. My name is Paula Jean and this is where I share about my sewing and making adventures. And it was pointed out to me by a commenter on YouTube that I never really properly introduced myself. So I'm going to do that at the end of the video, just so you have a little bit more context for, for me. <laughs> but I'm really excited to tell you about the Sahara bra pattern by Ruby's Bras. So this is a little bit more chatty pattern review video today. It's also my contribution to the Sew Over Ageism 2023 challenge that's happening over on Instagram for the month of March. So I'm just like barely squeaking this in. It's hosted by the Sew Over 50 Instagram account, which is one of my favorite accounts to follow as a sewist. And uh, one of the thrilling things is that this is the first year that I've actually been able to highlight a bra pattern or really any kind of lingerie pattern that fits the bill of this challenge. And I'll just show you on the pattern envelope, these four beautiful women, different body types. And you'll notice this over 50 model right here, uh, who, who also fits the bill of, uh, being on the curvier side. And this is, this particularly resonates with me because this is why I sew. I love clothing, I love fashion, I love exploring different styles, and being a curvy person, I just was never really able to participate in fashion the way that I want to. And um, Corey from Corey's Fancy Goods did a guest editor spot on the Sew Over 50 account um, maybe a week ago, a couple of weeks ago pointing out how when she went through her many, many sewing patterns, she couldn't find a single one that featured an older model who was also on the curvier side. And just to give you context for Corey, this is the Ahead of the Curve fitting book, which I love. Uh, this is this is Jenny from uh, Jenny Rushmore from Cashmere at Patterns, and she's the one who wrote this book. And one of the models is Corey. So that is the lovely Corey, uh, who is an artist and sewist. And when she wrote that post, that really opened my eyes and made me feel seen and heard and not alone in in all of this because even though uh, I think pattern companies and the home sewing community is really trying to make a push toward body diversity um, and highlighting age diversity as well um, it it's still a long way away from being in the mainstream. So I really appreciated that post from her and it made me really want to do a video about this bra pattern. So this lovely uh, dress form of mine, Betty, is wearing one of the ones that I made. Um, so this bra pattern, like I said in the beginning, it is four pieces. It's so simple and elegant and I just adore it. Um, it's the outer cup, the inner cup, the bridge, and the wing. And that's it. It's made from non-stretch or low-stretch fabrics. The size range is quite extensive. It goes from 24 double A to 46 L. And I was aware of this bra uh, quite a few months ago. I think it was released last summer. But for some reason, when I looked at it, I didn't look at any of the details when I saw people making it online because I just assumed that it was a stretch cup. And then when uh, Deanne from Dressing D, who I love as a resource for, for her experiences with different bra patterns, and she made this bra, and in reading her post, I discovered that it's made out of non-stretch fabric. So that got me very curious and made me want to get the pattern. So this is, uh, I made this out of a, a satin that's got a little bit of stretch to it, and I did line it. I should mention that the bra comes in three views. One view is a sheer one, which is kind of highlighted on the front of the pattern. Pattern. The other one is made out of a more solid fabric, so you'd make that out of like a duoplex or, or some other solid bra uh, material. And then they also have a version that's covered with uh, a stretch lace that you would use a like a sheer cup lining or a tulle or trico on the inside of that to stabilize it. It also has a couple of options in terms of the, the height of the band. So the ones that I made were all the long line version 
but I used a three quarter inch elastic around the bottom band. So the actual height of it is falls between a, a regular band, uh, band length and a long line. So it kind of hits right in the middle, which is kind of perfect for me because I have a very short torso and it hits me just in the right spot where, where I like it to. And the one thing I want to highlight that makes it seem kind of magical to me is that it's so weirdly supportive. And I am not a structural engineer, but I think the reason that it's so supportive is because it's got these triangle cups, right? And when I know I don't have this on because I'm not quite that confident enough to appear to you in, a, in my bra on, Insta, on YouTube, sorry. Um, but it's a true triangle bra that kind of hits like right at the, right above the apex of your bust. And because that seam goes right up there and then the strap just extends there, it's, it's got this support that goes right across the midline of where the bulk of the mass of your breast is. I don't know how else to say that. But I think that's the reason that it's so supportive even though it doesn't have an underwire. Because other bras, like the like even the bra that I'm wearing, the strap is over here and it's quite supportive, and, but it's an underwire bra and uh, the straps come off the side. Part of this design that I'm excited about uh, for the summer in particular is that you may have noticed that those slip dresses, like kind of 90s style slip dresses are very, very popular. Uh, they started to get popular last summer, but I think they're really coming into their own second round now this summer. And this is the kind of bra that you can wear with that style and, and not have your bra kind of coming out at a weird angle. That's something that I've always kind of struggled with. And because I haven't gone into the depths of making a super supportive strapless bra, I am gonna do that. I, I This summer, I really wanna do that. Um, but because I haven't done that yet, having a bra like this that I can wear with those kind of, uh, with that cut of top or dress is very exciting for me. So I have made four of these, including the first muslin. Ruby's Bras is getting ready to come out with an update to this pattern because I think on the original, from what I can gather on Instagram, on the original, in larger cup sizes, the center seam was kind of coming off to the side. And that was my experience with my first muslin of the first version of the pattern. I really liked it. I had to make a few little tweaks that I always tend to make on bra patterns, but I had a bit of east-westing going on. And then, uh, it, then it came out that they were working on a version two and I actually got in touch with them and they sent me uh, one of their new versions. They're not done tweaking the pattern quite yet, but they, went, they sent me a new version for my cup size and it made a big difference. So I really encourage you if you've either already bought the pattern and tried it and it didn't work for you, or you're considering like, oh, is it really gonna work for my cup size? Uh, they are gonna come out soon, I think, with the version two of this. And, and I imagine everybody who bought the pattern is gonna get the update. So I was very, very happy with the update. It, uh, this seam now comes across the uh, apex of my bust and there is a little bit more uh, coverage on the cup. When I'm wearing it, I have that feeling of like, oh yeah, I need to go put on a bra. Oh, Oh, wait, I'm wearing a bra. <laughs> like any bra, bra pattern, you need to do a fitting and, and make the tweaks because all of our breasts are so unique and individual. Um, so, but once you've done that, it's just, uh, it's, it's kind of magical. Like I, I may have used that word, word already, but, but yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Anyway, so I would love to show you the other versions that I made, including the kind of wild and crazy muslin that I made of the first version. Um, so I'll take you over to that now. So to start, this is my wild and crazy muslin that I made out of uh, using no bra fabrics at all. This was actually a leftover silk from a top that I made last year. And, uh, oh, I did use a sheer cup lining inside though. Um, and then I used a piece of uh, kind of a random faux silk thing that I used for the 
bottom bridge part. I covered, I used some fold over elastic here and the back band was quite large. And so I just, I didn't even put a hook and eye closure. I just sewed up the band. This is stretchy enough for me to get it on over my head. And where I was so surprised on the support was because I used these skinny little three eighths inch straps that I had left over. Uh, I had pilfered it from an old ready to wear bra because that's what I tend to use when I'm making a muslin. And, um, and it still felt so supportive and I was like, okay, they are definitely onto something here. So this is one, I still wear this actually around the house and even sometimes out of the house. The fit isn't quite as good as the new versions though, but I just, uh, I, I kind of like the way that that turned out. So I wanted to show it to you. And then this was the first version of the new updated pattern that I made. Uh, this was before any adjustments to that version two. I used two layers of sheer cup lining put in opposing directions to give the right amount of support. And this one I wear all the time. I barely had to make any adjustments to it. So you can see a little bit more clearly on this one, kind of the shape of it. And then on the inside, uh, one of the real selling features of this bra too is how cleanly it's finished inside. Like I could practically wear this inside out if I wanted to. So that's really finished nicely. Uh, I use this on many of my bras. It's just uh, underwire channeling and I kind of put it in the side seams to give a little bit of stability. And also if I have any future experiences of uh, of this stretching out or getting weird, I leave the top open. So if I need to, I can put in some quarter inch uh, boning and that might help me get some more life out of the bra. Um, so that's that one and that's that ballet back. This one is maybe my favorite version. I made a couple of little tweaks. Um, I raised, if I mentioned this before, uh, forgive me, uh, I had raised the side seam about three eighths of an inch. And this again is just with two layers of sheer cup lining. I did something a little different on the strap here. I wanted to have a strap that uh, kind of echoed the the sheerness and and simplicity of the bra and so I actually used some sheer cup lining and I fold it over in three and then I just um, took the fold over elastic and continued along the edge with that so it's got a tiny bit of give and then I I had some smaller elastic here that I just put at the end and that gives me enough to kind of play with if I need to tighten the strap a little bit I didn't have the right size of a ring at the back, but I did have this little um, G hook and I just closed that uh, G hook with a pair of pliers and it actually works really nicely. Uh, this is super sheer, as you can see, and uh, I really, really love wearing this. Uh, this. This looks all wrinkled because I actually used, I didn't have enough of, I didn't have two layers of the nude um, uh, power mesh for the back. And so I just overlaid it with a, a, a kind of a weaker, lighter mesh and it's fine when it stretches out and is on my body. Um, it just looks a little wrinkled when it's relaxed, but I don't mind that at all. And then here's the black one and it's black. So it's next to impossible to see anything. I'm going to try to get some light reflection on there. Um, but I really like this one as well. Uh, because the satin was a little bit thicker, uh, instead of just uh, enclosing the seams so that you could uh, just have one line of stitching, I actually opened up the seams and did uh, top stitching on both sides of the seam. And again, on the inside, it's just finished really nicely and won't spend too much time on this one because it's black and it's really hard to see. So anyway, that's my last Ruby's bra. Well, not my last one. I'm definitely going to make this bra again. I hope you enjoyed that brief pattern review of the Sahara bra pattern by Ruby's Bras. I just had to put this picture up here one more time because I love it so much. These ladies make me want to jump in a van with them and 
head to Sedona to a resort or something. And I also forgot to mention that if you're looking for a sew along with this pattern, Ruby's Bra's YouTube channel, which I will leave linked down below, has a very comprehensive video series to go along with this pattern. So I highly suggest checking that out if you wanna see how the bra is constructed. I also wanted to read to you a um, little sewing story time what Ruhi, the founder of Ruby's Bras, wrote in the sewing manual that comes with the pattern. Sahara, spelled S-A-H-A-A-R-A, -A -A not to be confused with the Sahara Desert, is a Sanskrit word meaning companion and support. What better word for something that makes you feel beautiful, held, and free? I thought that was really lovely, and I wanted to leave you with that. Now, to the introduction of me part, um, I, I started this channel because uh, even though I, I'm very inspired by and love the Instagram sewing community, I found myself going to YouTube a little bit more because I just kind of prefer longer format media and I wanted to mitigate my scrolling a little bit. And, and the fact is, is just on any social media, you, you have to scroll. So I wanted to join the YouTube space because I'm also very inspired by people I see on here and kind of wanted to try my hand at it. I uh, have been sewing for most of my life. I started, technically started when I was about six. There is a whole story of my sewing journey on my blog, and I will leave a link to that down below as well. It's written, but I also recorded it in case you prefer listening. So you can take a listen to that, but just br briefly, um, I sewed all through childhood, my teenage years. I worked a little bit in the fashion industry in my early 20s, got very frustrated with it, went into theater and acting and entertainment. And uh, I've been kind of in and out of sewing for uh, the better part of my life. And then about five years ago, I got kind of fed up with crying in dressing rooms. And I just decided that I'm going to make all my clothes. Uh, and that's what has happened and it's been really invigorating and exciting and uh, like I said at the beginning it just makes me feel like I can partake in something that is uh, kind of not always available to people of different shapes so I'm I'm really excited about it I continue to love it as a hobby and I hope you are enjoying so far uh, joining me here on this channel and if you are please consider subscribing giving me a like saying hello in the comments that would be wonderful and thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time <laughs>